So when we have this, we have the square root of 3x plus 7. Um, where add 1 equals x, you're going to subtract 1 on both sides to isolate the square root of 3x plus 7. All right? That's the main important thing, because now, once we have the square root of 3x plus 7, now I can undo that by squaring it. Okay. Now, here's where all the students make their mistakes, which I looked around here, and I was seeing a lot of the same mistakes. Ladies and gentlemen, if I have x squared, that means x times x. Everybody agrees with that? Sure. So if I have x minus 1 squared, that means x minus 1 times x minus 1. It does not mean x squared plus 1, or does not mean 2x, or all the other things we could again. x minus 1 squared is x minus 1 times x minus 1, meaning we now have to apply FOIL. foil. Okay? So therefore, this becomes x squared minus x minus x plus 1 which is x squared minus 2x plus 1. So therefore, the square root and the squaring cancel out. So I'm left with 3x plus 7 equals x squared minus 2x plus 1. Now, what's important about this one, Amir, is that we see that when we have a problem like this, when we need to solve it, we notice this is a quadratic. And when we did quadratic problems, we had to use factoring. And to use factoring, we have to set this equal to 0. We can't solve for the problem like we did the last, pro the last equation. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to subtract a 3x on both sides, and I'm going to subtract a 7 on both sides. By doing that, I get 0 equals x squared minus 5x minus 6. So now I have an equation that is set equal to 0. And the reason why that's so important is because now I can factor it and apply the 0 product property. So now I've got to look at this and remember, oh crap, how do we do our factoring again, right? How does that factoring work? Well, you can go ahead and use a triangle and do the negative 6 and negative 5. And then we ask ourselves, what two numbers multiply to give us negative 6, add to give us negative 5? So, I have, oh wait, that's being negative 5, right? Yeah. yeah. So it should be x minus 6 times x plus 1. Now that we have the product equal, now that we have the product equal to 0, I can set them both equal to 0. So therefore, x equals 6 and x equals negative 1. However, the most important thing about this, do you guys want to move somewhere else? Seriously, why aren't you writing this down? Can you move, like, a little bit? I don't understand why this is so important about this. So the main important thing that I was discussing with you guys is now we have to make sure that we check our answers. All right? You cannot just assume that your answers are always going to be correct. So we take 6, and we plug it back in. 3 times 6 is going to be 18, plus 7 is going to be 25. The square root of 25 is going to be 5 plus 1 is 6. Well, if I plug 6 in for x here, I get 6. So 6 is equal to 6. All right. Now let's do negative 1. 3 times negative 1 is negative 3. Uh, negative 3 plus 7 is 4. The square root of 4 is 2. 2 plus 1 is 3. However, 3 is supposed to equal negative 1 if you put negative 1 in for x, right? So therefore, this is not a solution. So for those of you that are writing this down and paying attention, I um, guarantee this is going to be something that you're